all right guys welcome back to another g auto repair youtube video and today we're working on a 2013 hyundai genesis 3.8 liter and uh we're doing a starter job on this car and if uh, you're looking at this video chances are is you're wondering how bad is the job um what do you have to do because you probably realize that the thing is buried on this side of the engine under the exhaust manifold and the cross member the steering everything is in the way there is no physical way to reach it so if you're watching this video is because either you have to do one you got into the job and now you don't know what to do or you want you're preparing to do the job um, symptoms were car no start obviously you just hear the clicking of the uh or the clacking of the uh of the solenoid but no positive engagement it just clicks but it does not start over so tell signs of a bad starter now this starter is a bear to get to i'm sorry i know that's not what you want to hear but if uh if you're getting ready to do this job and you're not a professional um you might want to reconsider um if you are a professional and you're just getting some tips then stay along and i'll uh, share what i have learned this is the first time i do this job so this is what i have done this time um i looked at the service manual what they want you to do it so i pretty much followed the service manual because i myself didn't know how in the heck i was going to reach this thing so the manual tells you to remove the dipstick the shield which is right here and the alternator and things of that nature which i've already done this i already pulled the starter out i'm about to pull the new one in again i didn't know what i was getting into so i've kind of learned along the way and it's easier said than done easier said than done but it's not impossible as you can see here i got the new starter this is the it this is how you're going to get it out and this is how you're going to get the starter back in so obviously the first thing i recommend you do is uh you're going to loosen the dipstick tube which is which goes uh secured over here with a 10 10 millimeter 12 millimeter bolt i don't remember it's one of these here might have been a 12 millimeter but it goes right here alongside this uh, bracket right here and uh, this is what it looks like right here so it just kind of goes in like so and you got to wiggle it out um, disconnect the negative battery first of course that's your first step here's the other dipstick you're going to remove all the covers on the bottom and this side one I, the 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 man didn't tell me to remove this one but i removed it anyways it was just a couple more bolts to get it out so and um then what i recommend you do is you remove the alternator which is normally located here where the where the starter is here's the alternator right there and uh you're gonna loosen the two 14 millimeter bolts that's that hold it to the block you're gonna take the the belt off obviously and you're gonna remove the 12 millimeter nut and the connector that's on the back of the alternator there is a 10 millimeter bolt that goes right here okay this is the harness for the alternator you want to remove this so you can get a little bit more swing action going on there so once you get that done you're gonna loosen the motor mount bracket yes the motor mount bracket has to come out it has five 14 millimeter bolts that go to it now you're gonna have to look around and see but what i did was I've obviously after i pulled this out you loosen the the heat shield uh, i don't even know if that's truly necessary to be honest with you but i loosened it just because the uh, instructions said to do so but you're gonna have to get your 14 millimeter ratchet in here and you're gonna have to kind of come up with a with, with a strategy here it's kind of difficult for me to show you this but let me pull this out 
you're gonna have to get um i think two two or three of them you're gonna get from up here and you really you really can't there's nothing easy about this job so you really can't even get a good view i will tell you this i had to let me get down in here i had to loosen the rack and pinion bolts and bring the rack and pinion down a little bit drop it about an inch or two inch inch and a half or two because one of the bolts is right behind one of the power steering lines and you can't get to it so as soon as you drop this just that amount is good you will be able to get to it so i will share that tip with you um there's a 12 millimeter here and then these are 17 millimeters the the other two are over there just just lower it. you don't have to remove it completely just lower it to where you get a clearance and then you're gonna get them probably through here this actually that's why i removed the, that plastic cover so you can get some of these bolts through this hole you're gonna need some swivels and extensions and ratchets i got a swivel head ratchet and swivel sockets and things of that nature and that's how i was able to get to it and uh yeah you're gonna be wore out by the time you're done with this because you're gonna be working up here then going down then coming back up here and so forth and so forth um there's no there's not even a way to to reach the back of the starter to take any type of voltage measurements without doing all this because it's really in a bad spot this housing here kind of covers part of part of the starter motor like that you know so all this is behind like so some something like that that's how that's how it is on top of that you have a, a heat shield here covering this whole thing i couldn't even get over here to hit it to see if it'll get started without removing this i, I couldn't do anything you can't do nothing with this it's literally buried behind all type of heat shields and and brackets and motor mount and and the exhaust manifold um but you will get through it <laughs> you will get through it i'm i'm already 50 percent done i just got to stick it back in there so once you get the bracket out you're gonna loosen these two 14 millimeter bolts that hold the starter you're gonna obviously loosen this and the and the, and the connector and then you're just gonna reach in here like so i hope you guys can see this kind of difficult and you're going to reach towards the back grab it and pull it out and then to go back in obviously reverse you're going to go back in there reach in there and then you're going to put it in place so you can put the, the the bolts back in there but this is probably one of the worst starters i've ever done in my life this i'm not gonna lie this sucks this is not cool at all whoever thought about this should I don't know. I don't know. My the same thoughts I had about the uh, Nissan engineers with their air filters and stuff. Um, they should stop reproducing morons. Because <laughs> this is this is not this is not an easy one. So if you're thinking about doing this, reconsider. Um, this is going to be a little bit more difficult than just watching a YouTube video and, and getting through to it. This the video will help, but you still got to have a little bit of uh, know-how. So if you normally don't do this, I recommend you just go ahead and pony up the money and, and get somebody else to do it. Get a professional to, to take care of this for you. And uh, if you are a professional, this is how I got it to this point. Uh, I wish you well <laughs> well um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put it back in there and uh, I'll probably continue recording after it's done so you guys can see the the end result see you here shortly all right guys so it is the next day it is the next day of this project and uh, just to let you give you the, the the quick rundown I finished the job and when I started the car, 
it went to turn over the engine and then it just locked up the engine straight up locked it up so i was like oh my god what happened when obviously there's a clue here because you see there's two starters side by side you got the original here and then you got the new aftermarket here okay if you look at them they are identical identical however there is one difference and it's very subtle and i would have never thought about this and it's the pinion this has 11 teeth the original is supposed to have 13 so obviously it was going to bind up so that is the problem so here's a little tech tip for you guys if you're doing this verify the pinion before you install it because apparently there might be two different ones depending on what year or manufacture date or something i don't know but the difference is in the pinion one has 11 one has 13. i need the 13 so i'm gonna have to return this so that was just a little quick tip for you guys and uh i'll be back after i get this result all righty then so here we have the new reman starter and i verified we do have in fact 13 uh teeth on the pinion there so just wanted to make sure that you guys understand that there must be a difference and uh you could get the wrong starter it looks identical on the outside but the pinion is different and uh if you want to save a lot of headaches make sure you verify this first a little tech tip for you guys so let me slap this back on there and we'll catch you with the final final result all right guys so just as i promised here's the final result um we're gonna go ahead and start the car fired up like a champ ah <sighs> had to replace it twice but we got it going so again if you guys are thinking about doing this um, it is not a simple starter but I will say this it's easier the second time around <laughs> it uh, I did it a much quicker the second time around uh, I went straight to the point so again some pointers you're gonna have to loosen that motor mount you're gonna have to get that oil dipstick out of the way you're gonna have to get that heat shield out of the way um, things of that nature um you gotta have to kind of get gotta get the alternator out of the way um because it has to go through there um now i did mention earlier that uh, the i had to lower the rack and pinion this time i didn't have to do it um and i realized i had to do it because even when i loosened the nut for the motor mount i guess it was kind of stuck in place so even if i would try to jack up the motor it, it wouldn't go up it wouldn't separate the motor mount would not separate from the bracket so what i ended up doing was loosening the uh, supporting the engine loosening the bolts for the bracket and then i was able to remove it but in order to get to one of the bolts that line was literally right in front of the bolt so that's why i had to lower it but this second time around i didn't have to do that the the motor mounts just separated completely from from the bracket and i was able to loosen the bolts afterwards so you may or may not have to lower the uh, rack and pinion and it depends if it separates easily when when you go to lift up the motor a little bit um, you're, gonna, you're gonna have to lift it up uh, you know I don't know two three inches whatever it'll allow you to uh, lift it but once you get that done um, that's it all of the bracket comes out and the, mo the starter comes out everything comes out so um, much easier the second time around but still is not uh, is not for the faint of heart to say the least so i hope this video shed some light on it it's not a step-by-step -step how to video um I, I apologize i just don't have the patience to do that <laughs> i'm sorry it's just um i i get so busy I'm, I'm i'm one dude you know so i get so busy that i really don't have the patience to sit there and so i do apologize if, if that's what you were looking for um but i hope at least it gives you a it sheds light on how you remove that starter because it's not it's not simple it's not a simple one to say the least so, uh also be sure you count the teeth on that pinion because it, it'll mess you up there's a cataloging issue there um 
that both options come up when it's new and one is reman and I ordered the new one because we wanted to avoid problems and that's the first thing that it gave us was problems because it, I guess it was for a different model or something I'm not sure what happened there but I did get it to get that taken care of so thanks for watching guys like and subscribe and I'll try to do more how-to step-by-step videos I'll, I'll work on that I promise thanks See you in the next video. Ciao.